Welcome back to Charming Data, everybody. So I'm very excited about this tutorial because I created it to save you hours and hours of reading on how to deploy your app to the web. So in this tutorial, we're going to do exactly that. We're going to learn how to deploy this Dash app to the web using Heroku. If you're using Flask as your web framework, this tutorial is also for you because Dash uses Flask under the hood. I've created a step-by-step -step guide also that you should open under the video in the links because this will help you follow along and so you can use this for any apps that you might create in the future and that you want to upload to the web. We're going to use PyCharm IDE um, in this tutorial, but if you're using Visual Studios or Vim or Atom, this tutorial is easily adaptable to those uh, Python IDEs as well. Um, don't forget to open the link below the video if you want to jump to a certain um, section of the step-by-step -step guide under the video layout. You can just jump to whichever section you want in case you want to repeat something. If you want to learn how to create this Dash app before deploying to the web, just click on the playlist above. You'll see all kinds of interactive dashboards that I created. This is just one of them. I think it's called uh, the Data Table Introduction. All right, so let's jump right into it and do this together. Okay, so step number one is sign up for an account on Heroku. To do that, let's go into heroku.com. Went in there, click sign up. We'll quickly put my uh, first name and my last name, Schroeder. And then the email address we'll put tutorial email only gmail.com a very creative email that I just created no company we'll just put roll other United States let's do English and no, English Python and I am not a robot at least not now bus 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 all right create this Okay, so it's going to ask you to go to your uh, email account and check it. So let's go to the account and check and see what they sent us. Roku, click on this to confirm your account. That makes sense up until now. Create a password. Do an easy one that you don't forget. I always forget my passwords and then get stuck forever and ever. Click here to proceed. All right, so we created the account. Is that working? Let's see. Perfect. So now the next step after creating the account, step number two, create your app name. This will be part of the URL. Okay. So as you recall here, there's something that I created yesterday. This will be your app name. And then attached to it, you will always have this. So to create your app name, let us, let us choose it right now. Let's click on here, create app name. And we'll call it, what should we call it? For my mother, let's do something for my mother. I haven't done that in a I haven't done that in a long time, so that will be nice. Create app. It's called for my mother, and here are all the instructions um, that we'll use later to upload to the web. These are the final stages of the instructions. All right, so that was easy. We did number two fairly quickly. Let's go to number three. You need to download and install the Heroku CLI if you don't have that already, because this will allow you to create and manage the Heroku apps directly from your terminal. So what you should do is just go back to Heroku, and you see here, download and install the Heroku um, CLI. Uh, click on this, and it'll take you to the main page. Oh, my allergies are killing me. And then download for whatever your system is. You can download for uh, Windows. It will download um, the whole EXE file. And then I'm not going to do this right now because I already downloaded it on my computer. But once it's downloaded, just double click on it and just start the installation process. Make sure to, to leave all the check boxes that are checked by default. Leave it there. It should all work. And then you're done. Shouldn't take more than three minutes. All right, let's go back. All right, so we got the number three, which is necessary, the step number three that we just did. And now we're going to create a new project on PyCharm. Again, if you have Visual Studios or Atom or something else, just create your own project there or your own folder. This is the same thing as creating a folder. 
So I'm going to close this and I'm going to do this all over. Let's close this project and do this all over again from the beginning. Terminate, and close this. Okay, I want to create a new project. You can call it whatever you want. This will call it, say, um, a Heroku. Let's call it my, you know, let's dedicate it to George Floyd. This is going to be the name of the folder. I think it's Floyd like this. And then make sure that you're not clicking on existing interpreter, but you're clicking on a new environment. Choose virtual uh, ENV. And then don't click on these. I don't. You don't need them. You could if you want, but you don't really need them right now. Include the base interpreter. Just choose the regular uh, Python by default that you have in your system. And I'm going to use Anaconda for it, and I think it's Python 3.77 or 3.8. So this should be good for now. We're creating this environment. And while this is created, I went over A and B. We're going to create a new Python file to start writing the code for your app. Now, I already... <clears throat> let's see. If you have not written your app yet or have not um, coded it, then this is where you create your new uh, Python file and you create your own, uh, your, your, own, your own app. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. You would go here, like this, right click on it, you would create new file, and you'll create the file that you want. Let's say uh, my-app.py, as Python, and you would start coding, import, um, pandas, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to do that here because I already created my app. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete this because I already have my app, and I'm just going to cop like it says here um, just copy paste your code into the files of the files into your new project folder so my app is right here that I created it's not on the website yet but it has the dot uh, pi uh, code or file it has a CSV document that it's going to connect to that's where the information is and it has an assets folder that is uh, where I put my CSS so I'm going to put all that into the George Floyd new um, app that we created and just copy paste. So you can do the same thing if you created your own app already, just copy paste into the new folder that you created in PyCharm or Visual Studios or whatever. All right, so now we have it there. And step number six is inside your apps file under app, let's see, inside your apps file, your main file of the app, go to your main Python file where you created your app here is the dash data table and make sure that under the this line of code that you usually have there put this line of code server equals app dot server this is step number six this will allow you to to allow um, Heroku to recognize and connect the servers so this was um, step number six step number seven open the terminal and go into or CD into your project folder if necessary so let's open the terminal right here. We're going to make this a lot bigger so you can all see. Hopefully on YouTube you can see this very well. And I'm already inside the George Floyd um, uh, app that we just created inside the folder. And it's it, as you can see here, it's already activated the virtual environment that we created based on the, uh, Python 3.7. So now I'm inside the folder and with the terminal. And step eight will be to install all the libraries and specific version that your app needs. All right. So my app, as you can see here from the data table, let's go up here, is using all these libraries, Pandas, Plotly Express, Dash. So we're going to use, and I'm using specific versions. These are the specific versions I am using. I would recommend you also uh, pip install the specific versions because if version update, um, uh, it might break your app. You just wanna, and also it's a good way to remember which versions you're using and which and which libraries. So just pretty, I think you can copy paste. Just pip install like this. Let's copy it here, and then go into the terminal and just do paste pip install. Oh. 
sorry, it copied the A, so let's erase the A. Okay. There you go. Now I'm going to fast forward the video because I'm going to pip install all of these things, uh, pandas and plotly and dash, and then we'll go back to the to the video. Okay, so I installed all of these and these versions. Don't forget to also install G Unicorn because you need this in order for your app to run on Heroku. So let's install that. Pip install. Okay, uh, if you want to see the latest version of uh, G Unicorn, just go into pypy.org and you'll see the latest version if you just type it in here. And you could also use this for any anything you want, any library you want to see. Like, what's the latest version of Pandas? You go in here and it'll tell you the, the latest version, 104, or maybe the latest version of, of Dash. And it'll give you the 1.12. 1, 1 so if you see this video months from now, just go into the latest version and make sure that your app works with those versions and then just uh, pip install them into your virtual environment. Okay, so uh, everything was installed successfully. Let's go to the next step. Now you have to create a .gitignore file inside your project folder. Um, this gitignore file tells git what to ignore as part of your project. So in this case, let's create here. Um, let's focus on this part. So this is my uh, this is my app folder, George Floyd, and this uh, inside we have the assets, which contains the CSS uh, that I'm using, the virtual environment of all the things that I um, that I uh, all the libraries. So if you go into lib and site packages, you'll see all the packages that I installed: Dash and and Flask and Plot G Unicorn. Um, so let's close this. We don't need that. Um, and we have the CSV and we have the data table. So uh, we're also going to create now the new file. So just create, uh, right click on this, do new file, and we'll create dot get ignore. And inside this here, um, what you want to do is you want to copy paste this line and just create four separate lines. This is all the things uh, you're telling the Heroku app what to ignore inside your um, folder. So let's go back here. So after V, E, and V, just enter, ignore the enter here. Good, we have our git ignore file. Now you want to create a proc file inside the same folder, okay? So let's create that, let's copy it, and let's create it right now, right here, right click, new file, and we'll just call it proc file, no space, Enter and inside you're going to put this. Just copy paste this without the A. There's always a, a bullet point there. So you're going to put web uh, colon g unicorn your app file without the dot py. So erase this. Our app file is data table dot py. This is where my main um, uh, code is located. So I'm going to call it data. Make sure you spell this correctly or it won't work. Data table, do not put .py, colon server. All right, so say that. And now we have our proc file. And now you need to create, in step 11, uh, the requirements. This is what Heroku is going to use to understand what kind of libraries to download. So go to, back to the terminal. Go into the project if you need to CD into the project. So we're inside the terminal here, and we're inside George Floyd. That's good. And we're going to type pip freeze and this requirements. So let's go in there, pip. Okay. And now it's going to create our requirements text. We'll take a look. Let's uh, close this, open this back up, and we'll see that now we have our requirements text, which is all the, the libraries that Heroku needs to install in order to create this app. Great, let's close all these up. All right, so we have our git ignore, we have our proc file, and we have our requirements uh, file. That is all we need. So now we can actually log into Heroku through the terminal and upload our app to the to Heroku. So these are the final steps. Go into the terminal and type Heroku login. I'm already logged in, so I probably don't need to do this, but I'll do it, I'll do it just in case. Heroku login. 
click any open to open the browser. All right, log in. And I think it's just going to skip that username because I'm already logged in. Perfect. So I can close that, go back. All right. What do we do after that? Then we're going to get in it. Now, all these instructions from 12 to 17 are actually located here as well. You see, when you hit, when you go to your, let's go personal, let's go back to personal for my mother is the app that I created. Um, and inside, go into deploy. And in deploy, you will have these instructions. At least before you deploy your app, these instructions are going to look this way. After that, it changes. So we did Heroku login. We went into our project um, folder, which is right here in George Floyd. And now we have to do git init. So git init, because it's initiating a git repository. Perfect. The next stage is to type in Heroku git remote and then app name from step two. Let's see if this works. Okay, so I'm going to erase 14 here because we don't need 14. Heroku git colon remote a app name from step two so app name from step two remember this our app name our app name is what we created in the step two which is um for my mother this is the app name i'm just gonna i'm just gonna copy paste from here so i copy paste correctly with the spelling all right Perfect. So that worked. That was spelled correctly. And the next one is um, git add. So we're going to do that. Git add. We're preparing to stage uh, the app. This is all git language. This worked. Don't worry about this. This is about our CSV file. And then we'll do git commit am. Actually, I'm going to copy paste from here. It's a lot easier. Git commit am. You can change this message inside the 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 uh, quotation marks i'm going to say initial launch all right and then the last thing you want to do now it's stage we did this push Heroku master let's actually copy it from here it's a lot easier get push Heroku master there you go now i'm gonna i'm gonna fast forward the video because this usually takes some time um, on my computer, on my older computer, it took me about 20 minutes to go through this stage, so don't worry about if it takes you more time. Also, the pip install, all the libraries that we installed, took me about 15 minutes on this computer, so it does take some time. Uh, make sure that if you are you have a very strong antivirus or uh, firewall on your computer, just turn that off so it doesn't have any problem with the uploading and deploying to Heroku and when you pip install all these libraries. Okay, so I'll see you in a few minutes. Perfect. Done. So now all you have to do is click on this link or go back to your Heroku webpage, open app, and it should work. Oh, so we get an application error. So this probably means that we misspelled something or one of our files was not correct. So this is actually great because you can see how I debug live. Go back into your um, files and let's see what I made a mistake. Get ignore. Everything here seems to be spelled correctly. Let's go into proc file, proc file. Oh, here we have data table pip. So it's not supposed to be that way. Remember from the step, you're only supposed to have, have your main uh, Python code for the app, uh, the name of it right here. And the name is data table.py without the pi. That's where I have my, um, my main code as a reminder, all my libraries and the app server. So I put pip here by mistake and I have to erase that. And so I'll save this. And now what we have to do, I'm going to close this, is follow the instructions on Heroku. So you'll see that given that we deploy the app, we're not going to repeat these 15 to 16 steps. We have a few things before that. So what you want to do is all on the deploy page inside um, the Heroku web page. Go into Heroku login, we did that, and just clone your app first. This is what you want to do when you want to fix some bugs, or you just want to update your app with more things that you added to it and, and um, stuff like that. So we're going to go in there. We're going to clone it. Okay. Come on. Oh. Copy. Okay. Cloning. Perfect. So now I see it in here. It's cloned for my mother. So all of these files 
are going to be inside the one that I cloned. So right now it's inside here, right? But remember, it, it cloned it cloned the proc file that was damaged. I'm going to delete this because I don't want that that had the wrong name in it. And I'm just going to put this, I'm going to copy it and just put it inside the folder. All right? So this is what we're going to upload with all the, the right proc file into, into, our, into our Heroku app again to make sure that it's the correct version. So now I can go, I see I have to CD into the new clone, to the new folder. So I'm going to go CD into for my mother. That's my app name. So now I'm inside the for my mother with all the correct documentation. And the next step is to get add. Now it's step 15, 16, 17, so it's all the same. Get add dot, and then we have to do uh, get commit make it better. I'm going to change the language from instead of make it better, I'm going to say fixed proc file uh, spelling mistake. Enter. And that is it. Now I only have to git push uh, Heroku Master. And now it should finally work because we are using the right proc file with the right app name inside of it. There we go. So now it should work. Let's click on this link. Actually, let's go into Heroku and just go into open app. And now it should all be set. Wonderful. You see, now we have the countries, uh, the pie chart is going to come, the line chart, we can choose in different countries, um, and there we have it. So make sure to hit the like button. If you enjoyed this video, show your support, um, share with others, subscribe below, turn on your notification for this channel, because each week I'm going to upload a new video to help you create great data visualizations and dashboards using Python alone. Have a good day.